Hi everyone, it is that magical time of the week where I answer your questions. And we used to do this at the end of our videos, but they were getting a little too long and I really wanted to get back to some of the great questions that you guys had. I felt I didn't have enough time, so we're gonna try releasing an extra video maybe every week or every other week. Don't hold me to it, but we're gonna try. I'm gonna try to get back to more of your questions. So without further ado, here we go. Madame X or Madam X says, Hey Melissa, now that we have almost finished flu season, is there anything that you do differently to clean after you've been sick, let's say for two weeks? Any disinfectant tips or recommendations? So, as I often say, we have a video on that and it details all about how to clean up after you've been sick. That way you can keep your house clean. We also have another video about 10 points of contact, which means anything that your germy little fingers touch. And then of course you go like this and then you reinfect yourself. So watch those two videos. Jill Olson says, question for an upcoming Q and A. Here we are. My cats were given a cat tree, multiple levels covered in shag carpet for Christmas. That's so cute. Santa knew what they wanted. And I'm looking for suggestions on how to regularly clean it, thanks. Okay, interesting. Well, cats, it's really important that their scents stay on their toys so that they're familiar with it and they know it's theirs. They're a little different than we are. But to keep it clean, what you can do, especially if there's like a stain or anything kind of yucky, is you can just use a little solution of dish soap and water, use a little cleaning toothbrush. You can brush up whatever that stain is, rinse it uh, with a bit of water, pat it dry. And then if you want to just, um, deodorize it every now and then. What you can do is sprinkle some baking soda over the cat tree and then use a little vacuum attachment and vacuum up all that baking soda. Next question comes from Anthony Morado and he said, I have a question. The little space underneath the water fountain in our fridge has a white residue, which might be mold, he says. We've tried bleach, cleansers and vinegar and it won't come off. We just put a paper towel on it for now for water leakage. Maybe it's irreversible by now or I'm not using the right solution. And then he goes on to say some really lovely things about our channel and wishes me a happy new year and it was very nice. So here is my best guess as to what that is based on what I'm hearing. It sounds like you've got a combination of hard water mineral deposits as well as some etching. If you can't get it out and it looks like it has actually ruined the plastic, then it's probably etching. I, we used to have that in my old house when I was growing up. And it does look pretty gross. Um, you can try something that's designed specifically to remove minerals in lime deposits. You can also look for full strength vinegar. And if you apply that on and leave it all night, I think you would have some really good results and then wipe it up in the morning. Uh, you can also look for specialty products at like a Home Depot or a big box store. And finally, you can also call your refrigerator manufacturer and find out if there's a way to replace uh, any or all of those little parts so that way it's not so visually offensive. Um, but anything like a regular cleanser or a bleach isn't gonna help that situation. Mrs. Christina Gilbert says, I'm starting out an essential oil collection, but I'm not sure which ones to start out with. Any ideas? Love essential oils. I'm very excited that you are starting a collection. What I would recommend starting out with, if you're thinking about getting essential oil specifically for the purpose of cleaning, would be like a tea tree oil. I'd recommend lavender. Lemon is really nice, rosemary, orange or tangerine. I also have vanilla, which I, it's purely selfish. It has no extra benefits, just smells really nice. And I think those are really good core ones to start out with and you get a lot of um, extra properties with those essential oils like antiviral, antimicrobial, antibacterial, and thyme is another really good one. So I think that would round out your collection to begin with. And then Joan Walker, on the same note says, where do you buy your essential oils? Well, I buy my essential oils from my local health food store, but who knows guys, maybe one day I'll carry my own line of essential oils just because I love them so much. We then hear from Miss Malika 64 who says, you and Chad are the second YouTube couple I follow who met on POF Plenty of Fish. Amazing. I hope you will consider doing a vid on how POF brought you two together. <laughs> I hear so many things about that dating website. <laughs> oh God, okay. Um, yeah, so I think I'm kind of out of like the whole online dating scene now because apparently like Tinder is way bigger and more exciting than Plenty of Fish ever was. 
Honestly, Chad and I just happened to get super lucky. Plenty of Fish is as crusty as dating websites get. Um, but you know, maybe one day we'll talk about our online dating experience and how we met and how that all went down. Because there were lots of interesting situations that happened for both of us. Lisa M. Brack, and I hope I said your last name right, you always comment and you follow me on Instagram and I really enjoy everything you have to say. She says, can you tell me if there are any orange scented cleaning products that you like or recommend to use, especially for laminated wood flooring? No, um, I, you know, when I buy products, I tend to look for ones, um, you know, my flavor profile that I really love is like vanilla and warm scented stuff. And then I'll, I don't know, I, I'm, orange really isn't up my alley, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But that being said, what you can do is if you make up your own floor cleaner um, or you buy one that's unscented, you can just add orange or tangerine essential oils. If you add like five drops to your floor solution, your floors will smell uh, for a few minutes. Really fantastic. We then hear from the lovely Heidi Williams, who says, I have one very quick question. How do you clean white gloss furniture? Mine gets dirty every five seconds. Help. Well, I don't know where you live that it's getting dirty every five seconds, but here's the deal. White gloss furniture, just due to the nature of the fact that it's glossy, will reflect matte or dirty spots um, more obviously because if the whole surface is clear and glossy, you're gonna have these blotches that block that shimmer and that's gonna make it really obvious. However, on the flip side, if you have a really matte surface and you have shiny or blotchy things, it's gonna be the same thing. So, you know, I don't think there's a difference really in terms of glossy or matte furniture and what looks cleaner, but now that we have that out of the way, what you can do for cleaning is you can just use a microfiber cloth with a little bit of water or a bit of all-purpose cleaner and you can just wipe the surface away. That's the best piece of advice I can give you. You can't use a furniture polish on it, so stick with that and I think you'll be in good shape. Narlene111 says, I just wonder if you guys in Canada slash America always put the wet laundry immediately in the dryer. I mean, here in Europe, we usually hang the clothes and let them dry, and if we need something immediately, we put it in the dryer. Interesting. Yeah, um, we do. I mean, that's, that's just the way that we've all been taught how to do laundry. I think uh, in Europe, there's probably more of a conservative um, mindset when it comes to energy use, which is why you do hang things to dry. It could also be the fact and I don't know where in Europe you live, but honestly, if I lived somewhere hot that had really nice weather, I'd be hanging my stuff outside to dry on a line like an old grandmother. That would be me. So I would say, yes, we do that because that's what we've been taught. And I'm glad you found it interesting. Cheyenne Strobel asks, Melissa, I have a question about floors. No matter how I mop my floor, it's always sticky. My floor is either linoleum or laminate. I can't figure out what the problem is. Help. So to me, it sounds like you have a laminate uh, linoleum floor, and if it's linoleum and it's feeling sticky underfoot, what that probably means is that you have to strip off the old finish and then re-wax it and then rebuff it. Like there's kind of a whole method to it. I've never done it in my home because I don't have any, um, whatever it was I just said that your floor was, linoleum, but I know that that's what the right thing to do is. So that's what you got to do. And the other reason your floor might be sticky, perhaps, is because you're using too much de detergent or product on the floor when you're mopping it. So remember my little rhyme that goes like this, less is more when you're mopping the floor. Just keep that in mind. And that wraps up our first Q&A video of 2015. And the only way I can make these videos is if you guys ask more questions. So Clean My Space Nation, let me know your questions, cleaning, personal, business, anything, in the comment box down below. You can see I answer a variety of questions. And hey, if you guys keep asking, I'll keep answering. So there is your opportunity. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and you can also subscribe and you'll see the subscribe button somewhere to catch more of our great cleaning videos. I will do a shameless plug right here for you to follow me at Melissa Maker, Chad at the Chad Reynolds and us at Clean My Space on Instagram where you can catch all kinds of fun things going on in our house with our cats, with my nails, what we're eating for dinner and of course, what it looks like when we're filming behind the scenes here at Clean My Space HQ. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.